What's going on, everybody? This is the Basuda Triangle Podcast, uh, coming at you live from Corky's. That's Temple's number one destination, inter- entertainment destination. We have live music, comedy, occasionally drag shows. We'll get into that a little bit later. It's all around a good, fun time. Beautiful day here in Temple, Texas, downtown. The sun is shining, the birds are chirping, and I haven't seen a crackhead yet. So, it's I think a good we'll be day. okay. It's a good day. My co-host here is coming at you. Uh, What's has- up? I'm Gary Sprague. Uh... Shout out real quick to Maryland, Mex- Maryland, Mexico City, and Wisconsin yeah. for listening. The uh, homies. Yeah, someone in Mexico City looked up trash in Spanish and found us. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, where, yeah, oh, shit, where were we supposed to go for? Uh, I went too fast. Uh, That's fine. We got a very special guest today, don't we, Gary? Yes, uh, our guest today is United States wartime OEFN. OIE veteran certified. Oh, yeah. Keep oh. going. <laughs> OIF veteran, uh-huh. certified high fashion makeup artist, international pageant judge, America's first Miss Trans USA of 2018, the star of sold out show an evening evening with Madame Brazil, fl- fl- uh, fl- philanthropist. Fl- yeah, that. God, dyslexia sucks. The first American on Trans Beauty UK and our very good friend, Madam Brazil. Hello, everyone. How are you? I'm excellent. Thank excellent. you. We're going to get a Patreon going to help Gary with his dyslexia on how to read. <laughs> uh-huh. Are we going to explain the hats before we jump into this? Oh, yeah. It's uh, so New Year's. So we normally do a New Year's thing. So um, we're uh, a month late and a yeah. buck short. A month late and a buck short, but yeah. happy new year, everybody. Yes. We got ourselves the trashy working class man's bubbly right here in this nice quirky glass. And uh, yeah, so you already saw Danny. You'll probably see Chloe. Mm-hmm. And then uh, now this is where we are starting New Year's because <laughs> the hangover is finally gone. Yeah, it took, it took a month <laughs> to get over the hangover. Being 30 sucks. Yeah, right. So... And in Brazil, you have the resume. It's like a freaking phone book. I broke <laughs> my wrist trying to read it. <laughs> yeah, that was just the that was just the the highlights. The the full thing that you sent us will be in the description in the bottom and everything, so they get uh-huh. the full deal. But what, what's the backstory? In your own words. Um, the backstory is I always you know what I grew up to understand that after we all leave. We leave nothing but our name behind, and our name is our legacy. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what I'm trying to create right now, is make sure that I leave a good legacy behind. Interesting. Okay. So how did you get to where you're at now? Like, where did you start exactly, like, breaking out into entertainment? Well, I was a little squirt in my father's pants first. Um, (laughs) But how I got... Right. (laughs) Um, Well, no, how I got into entertainment, I just fell in love with it. One day I went to a a a drag show. Mm-hmm. Um, I never thought I would ever get knee deep into it as much as I did, but it, it wasn't so much the drag shows, it was the pageantry that did it for me. Okay. It was a show. Um, it was, to me, it's a lot of people mistaken drag for just having an alternative motive or whatever the case may be in all reality all it is if you go to vegas it's it's nothing but a mini broadway show you know it's it's an actor someone's on stage someone gets in costume they get into character and they're there to entertain you um and pageantry is similar but it's a little bit more structured to it and it's and it's a contest, so who doesn't love a good? Uh, and I'm very competitive. Mm-hmm. I'm very. I talk shit during Uno and Sorry. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm that girl. Oh, but, I'll ruin a friendship and Sorry. Ugh, uh, you know what? I almost got a divorce over a game of spades. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm. Yeah. My wife I don't, and I may have had some uh, domestics over a game of Uno. Shout uh, out to her. <laughs> hey, Sam. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, we've had, I've, I've, I've soured some friendships over some board games, like, you ever bought someone out of a Monopoly? Oof. Like, just... I don't like, like Monopoly. I, I think it's just an ongoing game that mm-hmm. just never ends until people start giving up. Yeah. Pretty much. It takes forever. I exactly. Heard, my kid brother, he used to, he had no strategy. He was just lucky. 
like I was, you'd always win, and then one day I threw him out of a window, and that was that. So. <laughs> See, yeah, uh, and and I'm I'm the person who likes to be the banker, and I'm like, today's a holiday. Everyone gets five hundred dollars. <laughs> like I'm that. I do not like Monopoly. I'm just like, ugh, let's make this interesting. I'm trying to spice it up a little. Uh huh. So you actually popped my cherry uh, for seeing a drag show. The first one that you hosted here was the first one I'd ever been to. Okay. And yeah, I found it. I didn't. I didn't know what to expect, honestly, but I found it to be quite entertaining. I was like, this is cool. I like this. Oh yes. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Um. Like I said, it's just, I, Temple's growing. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are sleeping on Temple. Everyone always says, I'm originally, I'm from Hollywood, California. And everyone's like, why did you leave Hollywood for Temple? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I like to be a big fish in a small pond. Mm -hmm. You know, um, in LA, Hollywood, you'll get plenty of me's. Out here, you wouldn't. Um, and as the city grow, I want to grow with it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I decided to go ahead and come and centrally locate it. We are, what, like two hours from San Antonio, two from Dallas, two an and a half from, from, yeah, an hour from Austin, two and a half from Houston. I'm like, who wouldn't like Temple? Yeah. Um, and uh, I decided while Temple is growing, I wanted to be a part of that growth and that change. Yes. And of course, you know, lower cost of living, people aren't shitting on the streets. My goodness. Not, not yet. yet. Not, not yet. yet. Not yet. We see you, Carl, on the streets. We see you. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen him straight shit on the sidewalk. Yeah, no, he hasn't gone that far, but no. uh, we'll, we'll we probably pump the brakes on that real quick. Yeah, no, <laughs> we just we just tell them the cops are getting called, even yeah. though there's no cops being called. Yeah, as a community, we would handle it. Yeah. Um, well, that's like like y'all have property. foxes doing renovations upstairs. Yeah, apparently, we're doing home improvement upstairs. Well, no, we have foxes, and that's exactly what they sound like sometimes. Oh, you have foxes in your house? Yes. Okay, I told you the house is underground. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So our home is underground. It's the only underground home in, te uh, in Temple, Texas. Really? So there's a den of foxes, a family of foxes that dug a hole into a roof, and it's hollow, so they dug and created a den. And I don't know if it's during mating season or what. All I just know, they make a lot of noise and it sounds similar to like home renovations. I'm like, <laughs> what the hell is going on now, up there? On. Did, did the foxes invade your house or did the house dig a hole and invade the foxes? You know what? <laughs> it, it's the people who had the home built, mm -hmm. last name was Fox. So Get to me, I, I, right? Dude, so ironically, that's what I said. <laughs> I said, what if they created this home just for them so they can live, like, forever and ever? I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, the, there's a lot of crazy... I've seen crazier things up in this world. They died so I wouldn't be. as a fox. And that's what I was thinking. Have you, have you named the foxes? No, you don't see... Well, I mean, I've seen a red one and I've seen a black one. So I know we have those two. Um, and I always thought they were cute creatures until one of them hissed at me. I was in the backyard <laughs> trying to do some yard work and I, like... I don't know, I was walking up one of the little tiers we have and then I walked over by some bushes and this thing jumped out and I didn't know what it was. Um, but when I tell you this thing turned around and looked at me and hissed, foxes are the ugliest little things. <laughs> I've always thought they were like fluffy and cute and no, uh-uh, they are vicious little creatures. But I'm going to try, I'm not trying to domesticate them, but I, I'm going to kind of renovate to make it to where I can kind of let them get used to us because, I mean, they live in our neighborhood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but we have coyotes, hawks, and deers, oh, and, but yeah, it's At like least a, you know you don't have rodents because foxes Exactly. But, I mean, one time I had to bomb the house completely um, because of fleas, which sucked. Oh, so I had to yeah. leave. And, I mean, they're wild, so you can't control when they come and go or put flea collars on them like I want to. But. Them in the, in the place you know what? But I, I but I went to one of those little feed stores or mm -hmm. whatever, you know, country people do. Um and it's this bag for flea medicine, and I sprinkled oh. it at the entry, so when they do go in, okay. they at least get that flea stuff on them. Huh. It so you worked. Want, you want so to keep far. them around? You don't want to like call in? I and mean, control, have you know what? And I did call them, but then they told me that they don't house them or do anything with them. They put them down, and oh, I don't no. want to put anything. Yeah, I yeah. don't. That they were there before we got there, I'm sure, you know? Is that Bubba coming through with a fucking 30 out 6 rifle? You know what? No, <laughs> no, they no. They were going to cage them, but then when they catch them um, all, they were just going to put them down, and I didn't want that. So I was like, no, it's okay. 
and I'll just deal with the little fleas. But I mean, since I brought that stuff, I've never had an issue with it. And on honestly, how many folks can say they have foxes living inside their I home? I feel like that is the classiest invest infestation you could possibly have. Right? Yes. Some people have rats, mice, jerk. I don't, I don't know where. Oh, we have fox. foxes up there. Yeah, yeah. Foxes, like that's that's kind of classic. Like yeah. yeah, it's even actually um, a part of my Wi-Fi password. <laughs> <laughs> It's the Fox House. That's awesome. You get like a banner and a mural, make it into a little historical site and shit. You know what? When I get statues and stuff, I'm going to have little foxes. You're you know how they have the lions? Yeah. I'm going to have foxes. Especially if you're going to be there for the long haul, you know, in that house. Uh -huh. so, which sounds like it, yeah. Sounds oh, like yes. You need to get a fox tattoo. You know what? I thought about that. I, I really did. But you know, my favorite animal was foxes to begin with. I actually was, when I transitioned, I actually was going to name myself, my last name, Fox. Because mm -hmm. my first name, well, it was Brazil, but I legally changed it to Madame Brazil. Um, but I was going to leave Brazil, have my middle name as Ian, and then last name Fox. So when you say it together, it's Brazilian Fox. That's clever. Uh, right? I like right? I always love those. Like, anytime you use, like, drag shows, they always come with, like, the most interesting names. Uh huh. Uh huh. And like, uh, I can't think of it at the top of my head. What changed like, your mind on it? What changed my mm -hmm. mind? The middle name Ian. It sounded like a little boy name. Oh yeah. 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 So I was like, ugh, I don't want people well, calling me too, Ian. Like, if you got on an ID, it would be inside out because they do the yeah mm -hmm. first, last, middle. Okay, that makes sense. It wouldn't all fit together. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? No, I'm not doing that. So and the reason why all my my friends were like, why did you put Met? Because when I changed my name to um, it, it, it's either Madame Brazil or Madame Brazil. Mm -hmm. um, they were like, why did you change your name to Madame Brazil? They're like, oh, girl, you're being extra. And I was like, why am I being... Madame C.J. Walker did it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No one said nothing. She was being extra. Last time I checked, this was America, and you can just uh, do whatever you want to. So, uh, yeah, but I, I backpedaled on the Ian part. No, I get that. Like, it's... It, it, like you said, little boy's name. So you're uh -huh. like, yeah, I want that. Uh -huh, and I was like, like the, the changing of the ID. And it just, aesthetically, it doesn't work. Exactly. I don't know if you can tell, but Gary and I don't put as much thoughts into ideas. So one of us would have gotten, you know, pretty jammed up with that. Yeah. <laughs> Afterwards, I realizing like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what Gary... Gary would not have even been that clever, I'm sure. He would have probably <laughs> had the word robot or something in his name somewhere. I don't know uh. what he would... So, you know what? If y'all could have changed your name on the spot right uh. now, and if your name could be anything, what would it be? <sighs> you know what? I would change my middle name. Because my dad, initially, my middle name was supposed to be Rutherford. And I liked it. I don't know why. I really like the sound of that. Rutherford? Rutherford. It's Rutherford. For a trashy guy like me. Uh -huh. <laughs> Would you walk around with the top hat every day? Maybe. I don't that know. That says Happy New Year's on it, maybe? Possibly. Okay. Yeah, you got to now. Yeah, you're in uh, the breach of February. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. See, I like the most common... Mine's Gary Lee Sprague. It's like Lee is the most common middle name for any white guy. Mm -hmm. And it's boring. That's true. Yeah. And, like my initials are GLS, which sounds like a like a drug you get in the back alley of like Washington. It's a, or like a Mercedes. Well, yeah. You know? yeah. Well, you know, Lee's very common in the Asian community too. Yeah. At least true. at the nail shop. It's even like, now, like women have a lot of same sounding. It's L E I G H or whatever their yeah. variation of uh -huh. it is. But yeah, like female, you know, like, like Lee too. I'd have to figure out something clever. Like on the spot, I don't know. Like, like watching like uh, RuPaul's uh, drag show. Like, I always see, like, the interesting names and the fun names. I was like, I, I, like, thought about it. I was like, I need to figure out something. You know what? I applaud you for saying that you watched that show, you know? Because I know so a good. lot of, I know a lot of heterosexual cisgender men that, um, watch RuPaul. But it's just, they never talk about it. But at the end of the day, I'm like, it's just... It's just entertainment. It's just literally yeah. drama TV. That's all it is. It's my just full of drag queens. My ex girlfriend introduced me to it. She was like, she loved it, and she's like, you gotta watch this thing. And I was like, okay, because like, I I love crafty things, and like, they like make their own costumes. No, they don't. And, but it's cute. Continue. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. On TV, they make their own costumes. Yeah. But like, uh, and it's like the drama and like the, the back talk and like, I'm not really a reality TV kind of guy, uh -huh. but like for some reason. I love Rue, like the personality, the aura, 
and everything on the TV and the whole show and like the back and forth is always always super fun. And um, then like the lip syncing is like always dramatic and, and over the top and it's awesome. It's the contest. Oh yeah. It's the competition. And then like the bitingness between like drag queens always like talking shit in the most like clever way possible. Uh-huh. And uh -huh. I'm like uh, Cuz you still got to remember y'all are like brothers and sisters in this community. So you yeah. still have to be nice. Yeah. It's just being nice nasty. Well, and also you're playing up for TV. Yeah. So, yeah. No one no one wants boring TV. Yeah, no. I I don't want to watch a, a 22 minute episode of like a bunch of drag queens being nice to each other. At, at all. No. Cuz that's not <laughs> yeah. real. That's like Care Bears. Yeah. That's not entertainment. Yeah. Yeah. I need a wig being pulled off at one point. <laughs> so, do they do like auditions for that? How, how does that work? Have you ever yes. considered something like that? Um, you know what? Um, I never considered auditioning. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to be a part of one of the um, challenges when I was living in oh. LA oh. as a veteran. That was the first one. Um, they were introducing the challenge. I forgot what exactly it's called, but it was during the time to support our troops and the military and the LGBT and all that um, was going on. So it just so happened that I was out there in LA. I lived out there. I was asked would I like to be a part of it. And because of, I've already at that point had body work. I was still living my life as a boy. Mm -hmm. um, and but I have body work and I've already done drag and I just it, it just it, it wouldn't have been fair yeah. because whoever I would have to team up with would have clearly won that challenge because mm -hmm. I've had the experience I've already had facial things done and I I would have outcunted the girls there. <laughs> <laughs> so who's your inspiration in like? in the performance and everything. Like, is there a certain drag queen that oh. you look to and you're like, that's who I wanna... You know what? I would honor, there's so, so many, but if one, if you ask me on these spots, ah, there's so many, um, but Speed if... Round, if, let's if go. <laughs> Tasha, Tasha Long. Baby, when I tell you her grace, her class, her her beauty everything and she's i want to say elder that sounds old but she isn't she's is she's yeah. a trans woman of color and she's an elder um she is she just have mm -hmm. this grace and this aura um i do have we have what you call drag families mm -hmm. as you probably know from watching the show that it's kind of like your extended family outside of your real family the reason why that came about is because some people may not have their that support with their real family mm -hmm. so they go for a secondary family yeah. um and drag tends to be one of them um my uh, mother-in-law in the drag world is tommy ross absolutely stunning iconic and everything um, I don't want to sound biased when I say her name. Um, Shout out. So, Shout yes, out hey, Tommy. Um, but if I definitely had to pick someone that just stands out, it would definitely be Tasha Long. If y'all do not know who she is, just watch a couple of her performances. Okay. Ugh. Yes. Interesting. See, and, like, that, like, that kind of, like, that family away from family kind of reminds me, of, like, whenever, like, kids get into like punk rock and like getting music because a lot of kids come from like broken homes and they have issues in their families and then they find that they find their niche they mm -hmm. find that extended family and that's what it kind of like it sounds like because you find that that the like-minded your support yeah yes your support because like i remember when i was a kid like my parents both listened to country music and didn't care anything about anything like tuned in drop c or anything punk rock so like I felt very isolated at home, not in the extent that like with like people who transition or like in, in drag, mm -hmm. but like you have that little bit of isolation and you find your tribe, you find your people. Yeah, and that's all it is, is finding your people. I feel like everyone in life should always find their people. Yeah. It's kind of like if you find like, a homeboy from college and then y'all just you click you y'all are best of friends and y'all just start calling each other brothers that is the same it, it, it's it's the same thing it's just or you start a podcast with them oh, okay <laughs> brothers is that what's or going on or it turns sour and you end up in a frat yeah <laughs> well capify whatever sigma 
Leg mount. <laughs> Oh, are y'all in France? No, no. Definitely not. Oh. No, there's no way. Did you ever want to be in one? No. No. Oh. That was a uni- that's the most unified no we've ever had. Yeah, probably. I mean, as you can tell, we're not exactly college material to begin with. Uh, yeah. Well, you went to UT, though. Yeah, for a little bit. He has a lot more college experience than I do, so. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, frat- frats always seem, like, cultish. So, like, like that whole, like... Brothers in Arms I was like, no, that's how the KKK started out. I don't like that. <laughs> I, I, yeah, the, I don't know. They kind of give me like down low gay guys just wanting to play and touch on each other and that, just pretending to be straighter than they really are. Or they that, get that's really what it gives sleazy. me. They get really sleazy and like, well, because like I know a lot of girls who went to like frat parties uh-huh. and it did not go in their favor at all. So it's just like a, it gives a bunch of bros to like the excuse to reinforce each other's bad behavior. Mm-hmm. Bunch of Cosby like behavior. Yeah. My drip. <laughs> or like uh like you said, like a bunch of guys who are trying to hide who they are. And yeah. Like, oh I saw a lot of that. I was like Yeah, yeah doing all these tests to be involved. I'm like, oh my god, y'all just go and Go in the closet and turn off the lights and make out if y'all want to. Y'all just, like, no, to be in this you don't have to make a game out of it. To be in this front, you have to put my balls in your mouth. It's like, yeah. no, you just want your balls in somebody's mouth. It's yeah, okay. just say it. It's okay. And that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. Because, I mean, Go honestly, in, I mean, in all reality, I mean, like, who doesn't like bi people? I mean, if they want to be bi, the, bi people are sexy to me because I feel like they're, like, I don't know. They're freaky. They're I like that. Field. Yeah, I, I kind of like that. The like, options are open. Check any box you want. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I can admit to... Not full on, but you know, a lot of times when you get a bunch of dudes together, there's gonna be some kind of oh, he gets real gay, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The wrong being gay oh, with the homies. E- even, even, even ladies. Oh my God, ladies are like the biggest lesbians oh, ever, yeah. and they pretend. You know what? I didn't even realize it until I transitioned, and now when I started going into the women's restroom. They are more aggressive than men. Do not let ladies walk around pretending that they're these little angels. And oh my God, don't touch! I've been grabbed more in the females' restroom than I have in in straight clubs than I have anywhere in life. They're oh, like, yes. oh. Oh my God, your boobs! Jesus! And then, oh my God, your butt! And, uh, oh my, uh, can I touch it? And I'm just like, You're sure. Already touching all and uh, yeah, they're already touching it. And then I'm like, I've been like touched on more in the ladies' restroom than I have like in <sighs> in men's restroom. They're like, no eye contact. I'm in pee. like a, yeah. in like I've been touched on more in a female's restroom than I probably have in orgies. Jesus! I'm just saying, like, I'm not, no, I'm not saying that. I've Yo, been live in your a life. couple, <laughs> no, but. No, on the spot, we're a big advocate of people just doing whatever they want to do. As long yeah. as it's not hurting anybody else, you're okay. You know what I always say? As long as it doesn't include animals and children and doesn't involve harming yourself, others, our mm-hmm. elders, what does it matter? I also have a strict uh, no blood, no poop rule. So, mm. I agree with the no poop. <laughs> <laughs> a little blood won't hurt nobody. Is it like intentional or just like, yeah, if it happens, it happens? If it happens, it happens. I'm okay. not going to go around trying to cut somebody. And I don't want nobody <laughs> cutting me. I don't know. Some people may be in But I mean, I mean, the pen, I mean, I, I mean, hey, in order to pop, you know, a cherry, there has to be a little blood. That's true. That's so. True. <laughs> all scientific facts here. Um, so how, how long have you lived in Temple? Like, when did you move from L.A. to Temple? I moved, you know what? When I first moved, I didn't come straight from Temple, um, but i been here since 2015. Okay. Oh, wow. So it was before it's been popular to move to Temple. Right. You know, right. when I moved here, everyone loved, like, oh my God, you're from California, how lovely. And then now, you're like, California everyone's works. like, California people, so y'all need to one. stop moving here. Jesus. And I'm like, no, y'all used to love me. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was here before the rest of them. Like, Raising I'm, up the rent and shit. Uh-huh. <laughs> but that's good. It's good because that means Temple is thriving yeah. um, and it's growing and more jobs are going to come. And it's, I mean, what did people of Temple expect? You know, it's centrally located of Texas. We are, truth be told, we're the heart of Texas. Oh, yeah, true, 100%. So yeah. I've I'm been like. I've this for years, but nobody wanted to listen to old Jeremiah, but it's fine. Yes, no uh, one still listens to We're listening now, Jeremiah. <laughs> I'm still not. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's evident. That's fine. It's whatever. But um, so, th- with the 
all the stuff that you had accomplished, was that while living in L.A. or like a little bit of hybrid? That was through, you know what, I would say most of my accomplishments, um, as far as a lot of the awards I received, um, being a Grand Marshals, being the first Miss Trans USA, I started um, my own national pageants that okay. will be going on. It's... I'm about to shit on a lot of people. <laughs> um, it's speaking peace. Let's hear it. I love it. I'm, 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 see, this is the drag show, like in real life. It's, now. it's. You know what? I'm I'm going to be the example of mm -hmm. pageantry for trans women um, here in the U.S. Um, I love pageantry, but a lot of the pageantry is solely based around um, drag or maybe advocacy whatever but i i want to give a different type of experience where yeah. it's a workshop that these girls um leave with something other than just a crown a plaque an award or certificate and an experience i want them to leave with life skills lessons oh, okay. um I was thinking like it's a new car to... or appliance or something like that like Jeopardy. oh no this isn't yeah no this is not will of fortune, fortune. <laughs> you're not gonna walk away the new price is right <laughs> Um, no, but um, it's going to be a workshop. It's going to be three days. The first two days is going to be the workshop, and the third day is going to be the pageant of everything they've learned okay, in okay. the first two days. Because when, and it's targeting the audience of trans women from 21 to 31. Um, it's a 10 years, and every year, 10 girls get to apply to be a part of it. Um, I have it as a nonprofit organization, okay. and so it's 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 going to be some good things coming. Um, resume writing, um, mock interviewing, because no one teaches young trans girls, how, no one prepares them for life. Yeah. And the reason why sex work is so high in the trans community is because a lot of employers don't hire trans women. Um, are a lot of young trans girls they feel defeated when needing to go apply somewhere because they would know they have to get past the interview yeah. mm -hmm. and a lot of them don't think they, they they have what it takes to get there so this is going to provide them everything that the the the, the courage the mm -hmm. it, everything the knowledge the the willpower that they have in them they just need it to be brought out and it's awesome because it's not repeating history it's like you're giving these girls the chance to like get knowledge that girls before didn't have uh -huh. and it's you're having that building block so you don't want to continue that same struggle you know what and i would say a lot of people don't know um black trans women life expectancy is 35. really uh-huh yeah, like and biblical. that's it yeah right it's it, and that number's low i'm yeah. like 35. um i didn't realize that. i mean i knew that but it just never registered but when i turned 31 um i received the best happy birthday message i've ever received and i didn't even think nothing of it um one of my good judy's deja she called me and she was like hey sis i just wanted to say congratulations and i'm thinking huh because everyone always was contacting me saying happy birthday. Mm -hmm. So I was like, congratulations. What the fuck did I do now? You know? Yeah. Um, I was like, congratulations. She said, yes, sis, you're 36. And she was like, you beat the odds because the life expectancy is 35 for black trans women. Wow. And that was like the best birthday message I think I've ever received in my life. Um, and that just always stayed with me. Um, and it's what contributes to that number is sex work yeah so mm -hmm. i want to make sure these girls have the knowledge and the tools to be able to do other things so they don't have to rely on sex work to make a living for themselves that's awesome and like we can uh any any links you want us to put in the description we'll put in that and anyone watching this who who wants to look into that like go check the description we'll have all that in yes. there for you because uh, I mean, we're it's going to be a sisterhood. Yeah. Because yeah. you know how like sororities, you see sororities and everything. And we're not going to be the typical one. Yeah. But <laughs> trans women are really never invited in to be a part of sororities. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, a lot of them, they're focused so much on their transition that they don't even get to go to college. Yeah. So that's the purpose of this is to provide a sisterhood every year. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be their class. 
um, of 10 girls. And the pageant is just simply an activity. It's no difference than summer camp. They do potato sack racing. We're just having a pageant. Right. Um, it's, we're all sisters. We're simply looking for the big sister of the year. And that's going to be the girl who wins the national crown. And it's going to be held like in the... I want it to be held in motherfucking temple. <laughs> nice. I'm all for it. I'm, it's growing. Temple yeah. deserves something. I can easily have it in Dallas. Right. I can, eat. Austin would love if I take it. Like, yeah. I know of venues I can take it to, and they would, like, give it to me, basically. And they would come with their security, bartenders, everything, and we would just have a pageant there. But I'm really, really hoping that I can get it, um... At the tip, uh, the Temple Civic Theater. That'd be awesome. I want it in a theater, and I mm -hmm. want. I love the layout. I love how it's three hundred. It's three hundred. I love that they're a nonprofit as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love the intimacy of it all, and I really love that they're just inclusive there. Mm -hmm. Well, and like, uh, it, and it just shows that, like you said, Temple's growing, and like I mean, I've seen it, like growing up in this area, like. Temple, it was like, oh, what do you want to do in Temple? Like, well, there's a bar in Temple. Like, I'm not old enough to go to the bar yet, so there's nothing for me to do in Temple other than, like, play in punk rock shows and do nothing else. And, I mean, we're getting some stuff here and there, but the city's growing. Like, we have all these, like, uh, new ideas coming to the city, and we're kind of, like, weeding out that old blood, like, that old kind of, like, oh, there's nothing to do here, so we can make things to do here. Because you have to make things... Because people will show up. Because mm -hmm. like if you don't do anything, then no one's gonna show up. But you can make the pageant, and like you said, all those people in Austin will just give you. That's that's easy because it's yeah, Austin. Yeah, but, but it would be like the community, and but I don't want it to be a community thing. I want it to be a society yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it is what it is. We're greater in numbers, you know. So I don't want to have a trans event at a trans bar or yeah. club. I want it to be held simply at a venue. It just so happened the girls are trans. It's still a pageant. Yeah, it, there's no hidden agenda. There's no motive. It's strictly a pageant with young, pretty trans girls in it that are going to go and do wonderful things in life. And I feel like Temple should be able to experience that oh, yeah. and be a part of putting these young girls out to society, helping them with their confidence and giving them... There's no better place to visit than Temple on a stage. When I've had my shows here, every single every single entertainer, and I've flown people in from Las Vegas mm -hmm. both times, every single time people came here, they said they've never felt so much love. And they've performed in California, New York, Florida, like they perform, they've never with like a hundred times the amount of people, but the amount of love Temple provides, they've never felt anywhere else in the U.S. You listen and, in Austin, step your game up. Yeah, yeah. step up. Let's go. Y'all out there <laughs> keeping it weird and shit. Mm. <laughs> No, but yes, Temple Temple is definitely the hot spot. And I always tell people, y'all need to move to Temple. And they're like, what's in Temple? And I simply, I say it all the time. I'm like, opportunity if you present itself. Mm -hmm. You gotta make it yourself. Like, I'm like, it. moving is always lovely. You get to go somewhere and you get to be who you always want to be. Like, nothing follows you at that point. When you come to Temple, you get to create who you always wanted to be. Temple to me is about change. Mm -hmm. You know, it's if you want to come here and move mountains, bitch, come, you know, <laughs> and let people know, bitch, you move mountains for a living. I often compare Temple to uh, like Austin right before the tech boom, you know, uh -huh, uh -huh, they're just uh -huh. kind of like slowly, gradually growing. And then once it hit a certain point, they're just like, Phew. oh, yes. And you know what? And I, I've seen it. I've always told people. Temple is going to be the new Austin. It really is. Um, a lot of people may not like it, but it's going to be the new Austin. Um, and that's simply because Austin is trying to become the L.A. Mm -hmm. of Texas. But they're quick. At one point, they were quick about to become the Skid Row of, of oh, Texas. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Cesar Chavez in Austin is awful. 
because they were growing too fast, you know. And I was like, you you have to allow time mm -hmm. to kind of, no one likes change so i completely understand why a lot of these old heads out here shout out to the old heads um <laughs> i uh, no one likes change hell i don't even like change it's scary i, I yeah. don't like change so i understand their resistance um to seeing how it's progressing out here but that's because they're set in their old ways yeah. well, i think it balances um, it out too because like you said the reason why Austin is the kind of in the state that it is now because it's just a bunch of people from California. Mm -hmm. Whereas here in Temple, uh, yeah, you get a bunch of people from California or like other like states, but then you also have people coming in from different areas with different perspectives. And so you have like, like I said, a balance, which it's a good thing to have in my opinion. Sorry. Oh, no, you're good. I'm just being rude. Oh. No, uh. Your turn? Oh, no. That's what, okay, I, we're doing turns. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, see. Like you said, with Austin, like with us, like we they do comedy shows, and like I can throw a rock at any open mic and hit an LA comic, and like because all the comics are coming from LA, because and like you said, Austin becoming that new LA, mm -hmm. and like it's not weird anymore. It's just a bunch of tech stuff and a bunch of like people from California who used to work this tech stuff in California. They moved here for better prices, and then also we are out here like. We're Texas comedians, and now we have all these other guys like, oh, I'm an Austin comic. I'm like, no, you're an LA comic that moved here a year ago. Yeah. Like, you're not you're not from here, but also like, uh, it helped Austin comedy grow. Uh huh. Austin comedy used to be almost nothing, and now it's like any open mic you can get thirty people, forty people on one open mic, which is unheard of for a while, and so. It's that growth in the new ideas, and it makes other comics better. And then it, it just with anything like Temple's growing, so businesses have to like compete and then like make things better. And then the whole city just gets better in in retrospect. And then all these new ideas, and it's it's just fun to see a town that I grew up in was so boring, just having so many interesting people. Like the first time I met you, I was like, where did she come from? Like she, she's not homegrown. She didn't come from here. You didn't just sprout out of temple. We can always tell. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But like, I was like, I love that you're the big, biggest advocate for temple that I've heard in a long time. It's inspiring because thank you. Like uh, a lot of people just shit all over temple, and I'm like, no, look, look downtown. There used to be nothing in downtown, and now we have Corky's. Uh -huh. Thank you. And the, if it wasn't for Corky's, we didn't have a place to to film this. Um, and like, if it wasn't for Corky's, I would have never stepped up on stage for the first time. See, I, you know what Corky's give me? I always tell my friends, they're like, where, what's a, where was the track shows? And this, and I'm like, oh, it's, it's a little place called Corky's downtown. They're like, Corky's. And then I show them pictures. They're like, bitch, that little hole in the wall. I'm like, no, it's cute. I was like, yeah. cause even though I was like, y'all look at it as a hole in the wall. I look at it as an intimate setting. Yeah. I said, it's not a club. You're not going to come and see little kids running around with X's on their hands yeah. and trying to drink and fighting and a big dance floor and people slipping on the ground. I was like, it's nothing like that. It's mm -hmm. just grown and sexy entertainment. I'm like, it's, it's just people. Smoky. It's at all. I was like, it reminds me of like a modern day Cheers. Yeah. Okay. I can see that, that that's yeah. what I get because when you go like that's exactly what Temple gives me too. Like you go places and people actually know. I don't want to be a resident of Temple. I want to be a com I want to be a community member. I okay, want to yeah. go into businesses and I want them to know who I am and I know who they are. Um, it's nothing against big franchises. Right. Um, I just don't eat at franchise yeah. places no more because to me. I don't want to, and I always say this when I go visit places, when I go to Chicago, New York, LA, I'm going to the United Kingdom this year. Um, oh, sweet. I'm going to Mexico. I'm going to San Diego. I'm going to be a keynote speaker at the college out there in, um, in like two months. They're flying me out there and awesome. like covering everything. Um, 
when I go places, I always tell my friends, do not take me to no Applebee's, no right. Chili's, no IHOP, no... Di I don't want to do all the franchisee stuff. Mm -hmm. Take me to Little Hidden Gems that when I come, I can only find here because they don't have them back at home. Yeah, so right. when people come here... I find little hidden treasures that I can take them to. So when they go back home, they always say, oh, I want to go visit Temple again yeah. because I miss that such and such and such. That one's five with those people. Applebee's is and only good if you're real sad and you just want to drown yourself in dollar drinks. <laughs> That's the only reason Applebee's is Oh, exists. well, see, I don't. I just drink at home. See, like, sometimes I gotta, I gotta not drink at home because drinking alone just gets real sad. No, that's when you're supposed to call one of these little holes over or something. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, like I said, it's, it's sad. And if you can't find any, ugh, there's some out in the streets. I was going to say, that's your best bet because you live in a coffee shop, so. Yeah, girl. You do live in a coffee shop. Oh, my God, yes, when I was going to hang out with you that one time, you're like, oh, come to the coffee shop. It's a coffee shop. Oh, well, like. Uh, he loves his coffee shop. I, I love coffee. I am, uh, <laughs> which is funny because. Uh, so is that where you would take a girl on a date? You would take her to the coffee I, shop? Um, No, because too many people know me at the coffee shop. I, I'd rather. So why wouldn't you want to. Cause I don't know, I just, I don't know. I just uh, I'm trying to first date. Where, where, where would I go? I didn't even know you went on dates. I thought you just went to meetups and hookups. <laughs> uh, I'm nowadays, yo, mm -hmm. I'm not that bad. I don't like. I'm not. A hey, man, I'm all for it. This single. Old me is living by cares of three, man. <laughs> you know what? But I can't even really do the whole like. Before I met my husband, I. <sighs> Fox. I Dog. don't know Fox where. Dog is where I would take. A first date. Fox Dog is a cute. Shout out Fox Dog. Yeah, oh, shout yeah. out Fox That's Dog. Really Fox Dog is a really Ashley cute. Dog. But even Corky's is a cute place for a first date. Oh, yeah. I think it's very intimate how they have the little round tables with the little candle lights on them. Mm -hmm. But it's like a place you can go to laugh. You can hear live music. You can go hear comedy. Um, I think one time they had like a jazz singer here. Oh, yeah. like they have so much going We're on back here. Next week. Oh, see. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, some people just was, see, I went, ugh, before all this stuff, I was living in LA and I think the last time, like I tried the little, not meeting up at a club to date, I was going to hang out at somebody's home, not to do anything mm -hmm. that, okay, okay. you know, ish. No, but honestly, the person was trying to constantly like, what's up? Can I? And I didn't want to because everybody wanted him. And I was like, oh, no, I'm not going to bring you one of these numbers. But then one day I ran into him at the grocery store and I was single. Um, I decided, why not? You know, let's, why not? I'll give you some time, I guess. But I didn't want to go to the club. I was trying to do something different. So I was like, but I didn't really go out in L.A. like that. So I was mm -hmm. like, um... So what do you want to do? And he was like, you want to go to the club? And I was like, oh my goodness, I'm tired clubs of these clubs. Stuffy, and I hate right? The, so and I'm like, why do you want to go? The worst place is to go to is the movies. I tell people all the time, oh God, why the do you want to take someone yeah. to the movies? You can't even talk. You got to sit there being quiet in the dark, watching a screen. That's why I'm I love like, the movies. You can't even do anything. <laughs> that's a worse place to take someone well, that, on that a date. date. But like, I find my, my, that's my peaceful place. So I don't well, yeah, that. if you go and or hang out with friends or go with, you know, to watch something, but... It's when, the one place where I can tell people to shut the fuck up and, like, they don't get mad at me. <laughs> or they do get mad at me, but also they shut the fuck up in a movie. Oh. See, when I was trying to hang out with this one person that I finally entertained, mm -hmm. um, which made me realize I can't date bodybuilders at all. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've dated one before that, and he was actually one of the individuals on the cover of men's fitness magazine oh, okay. um but he was a little bit more normal i just couldn't do the whole gym head thing you know mm -hmm. but i tried to look past all that so when this one person was trying to you know entertain me um i decided to hang out i said well you know i'm not trying to do anything like that and i didn't want him at my place so i was like how about we just hang out at your place because i didn't mind cuddling i'm like who wouldn't mind cuddling up on a you know a big old <laughs> arm like that so i right. was like okay why it's not secure it's safe. and right so i'm thinking like okay this is going to be fun um i said well I didn't want to have him at my place because I think it's very dangerous that ever, like if you're a woman, no matter if you're trans or cisgender, if you're a woman, you should never just have men at your home like yeah, that. Yeah. So I was like, let me go ahead and go to, let's meet up at your place. Not because I was trying to do anything, but really because 
prior military got me very clean. Mm -hmm. And to me, I wanted to see how clean he was oh, because yeah. I wanted to see if I signed up for him, would I have to do a lot of cleaning? Right. So that's why I was trying to go to his place to mainly scope what it looks like, <laughs> but to it's also really know if we could right because you know that's how yeah. you play with people's intelligence. Like that's how you figure out. That's how you investigate. That's why I meet up at um, coffee shops and not. I'm oh, okay, and not your place. <laughs> so sure enough, I was like, oh, okay, well let's meet up at your place, and since you're providing the place. <clears throat> Um, we'll watch a cartoon movie, and since you're providing the place, I will pick up something to eat. And he was like, oh, okay, awesome. And I was like, I'm thinking Friday night, mm -hmm. we're hanging out, just cuddling, watching cartoons. I was thinking, I don't want to eat like, I was like, pizza. It sounds like a pizza yeah. night. You know, yeah, we're, yeah. we're hanging out. This is the first time. It's, we're just, it's not even a date. We're just, we're trying to... <coughs> Um, so I told him, I said, okay, well, how about this? Since you're providing the place, I'll go ahead and go get some pizza. That's what I thought. He said, his response was, you know how many calories <laughs> a slice of pizza has? Oh, fuck. Yeah, and? <laughs> I said, nibble. I don't even... I don't even know how many slices of pizza I have, let alone the damn calories. And it was at that instant moment I realized, oh, okay, no. We, it, it's not going to... Cancel Friday. I'm washing my... No. I, yeah, I have plans. I'm, I'm, I'm watching my hair grow. It amazes me. Like, because like those dudes who are like just built, they're like, oh, I got to watch the calories. I'm like, dude, you burn so many calories just by standing there because you're so like... Just all muscle. Just T-Rex. I make some really good pizza. I should have made some pizza and brought it here. I would have eaten the fuck out of it. Next I time, make some we will do an really two good pizza. pizza. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's healthy. Okay. I make it with like thin crusts and it's whole wheat and I use like all turkey meat and fresh vegetables oh, yeah. and all this. I'm all about you don't that. like olives, homie. I can pick them off. Okay, well, I'll make, like, I'll, I'll, I'll make it without the olives and I'll put <laughs> half on You're olives. You're so slighted by the fact that I don't like olives. <laughs> Do you like martinis? Is that your thing? No, you know what? Oh, I yeah. didn't even like green olives until I met my husband. And he doesn't even, like, he wasn't even eating green olives. I don't even know where that came. Like, I, I don't know. Have y'all dated someone and then you just started craving something weird that you never even craved before just by dating? And they don't even eat it? I thought I could think of. No, usually something that they munch on all the time that at first I'm like, that's weird. And then I'm like, you know what? I can go for some of that. Hot Cheetos. Hot Cheetos. I dated a Latin chick for a while. Say. And she ate hot Cheetos, and for some reason, it was always around me, and it became like a comfort food. But then when we broke up, I got real sad, and I walked past the chip aisle. I was like, God damn, hot Cheetos. <laughs> God damn hot Cheetos. So have you ate a bag since? No. You don't On like purpose? hot Cheetos anymore? Uh, I'm more of a Taki guy. Takis are good. I can, I can really? Talking. You're judging I'm a hot me Cheeto. I'm a hot Cheeto. I think you're just judging hot Cheetos on that relationship. <laughs> that's what it is. It. Still, how long ago was this? Uh, I don't want to talk Takis are it. salty. Talk about it. No, Takis are good though. Like salty, which is weird because like I dated a Latin chick. I figured she'd go more Takis than like. Mm -mm. She had good no. taste. No, they put away hot Cheeto, bro. It's just like hot Cheetos and sour pickles in the morning. Those are the girls I have tried to avoid in high school. If you like looked over and they had like up, like just that whole dill pickle in the hot Cheetos, it's like nope. Mm -mm. See, I was that person that got the hot bag of Cheetos and I turned it inside out. I put that chili and cheese in it and oh, I stirred yeah. it. Oh yeah. The Seven right Eleven special. Oh yeah. I used to, I did that with Doritos, just like the nacho cheese Doritos, like fold in the chili cheese and then add like a little bit of extra salt in there just to salt. So, yeah. Clog up the arteries that's why way. you like Takis. You like salt. Yeah. See, I just said that. Well, see, so I'm, trying to, I'm trying to like work out and be better. And like, I mean, we see each other in the gym all the time. So we we're no, both, we do not. A lot of times. I'm in the gym all the time. <laughs> she is in the gym a lot, and I catch her every once in the gym. That's As you're driving by. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with this bag of Takis. <laughs> oh. Okay, maybe Takis is my comfort food. Like. Like hot Cheetos with comfort, and then now I like went to the dark side of Takis. <laughs> the dark side. <laughs> Anywho, so we're coming up to our last segment. If you want to close us out with, uh, you know, we got a couple of minutes here. It's up to you. Advice and or um, 
words of wisdom for folks that are maybe trying to get into that kind of world, that realm of things, or just in entertainment in general, just whatever you got. Okay. That you're willing to give away for free because I know you're yes, going to start no, that no, whole no, thing. No, 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 I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, entertainment advice, just because you're on stage does not mean you're entertaining. That's um, me at the last open mic. <laughs> <laughs> Um, doesn't mean you're entertaining. However, you have to definitely have tough skin and you have to be okay with a pity mm -hmm. applause. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. People try to... No, no one ever wants to see someone's feelings get hurt. But if, they're, if there's a comedian and they're not funny, they're, they might... <laughs> Yes. You know, yeah. but it's, yeah, but it's not because they're trying to be ugly or rude, but it's, they don't want to take your confidence away either. Mm -hmm. um, same thing when you're in drag or as anything entertaining. If you're putting yourself on stage with the spotlight, you're giving people permission to judge you. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you cannot get upset because you see honest reactions. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of entertainers get defeated when they see that and then they start pointing the finger at the audience, making it seem like it's something wrong with them oh, versus yeah. Yeah. so they don't know how to take the criticism themselves, but they did, they did it to themselves, putting right. themselves on stage. Um, in life, I, my advice, I, would give everyone is yeah just everyone should transition um it has nothing to do with being transgender um it's everyone should transition um be comfortable in your own skin we only live once you mm -hmm. know um so i always say everyone does some type of transition in life it doesn't matter if it's from a boy to a man mm -hmm. are a boy to a woman. So you're not necessarily talking about just on a physical plane, you're talking it's like It's all spiritual, across the board. You okay. should always yeah. want room for improvement. You should always want growth for don't yourself. Stay um, don't yes, don't stay stagnant. Um, a lot of people are afraid of what they don't understand and I think that's what a lot of people um, find against the trans community. I feel like the trans community now were not the gays alone. Mm -hmm. They're not even more they're not more accepted. They're just more tolerated. Okay. Okay, yeah. Trans people are not even on that level. We walk down the street and people automatically be like, oh girl, this and that, that, that was a man, or this and that. And, and um, by the grace of God, I'm, I, I hate this word, but it is what it is, um, passable. I never have that issue because I get to pass in society. Mm -hmm. I get to walk down the street, I have guys looking at me, I have girls looking at me, it, 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 it doesn't matter. Um, to me, I'm not doing this for anyone's for anyone's eyes, I'm not doing this for anyone's approval. I'm just trying to live the best life I can live for me. We're all here once, so why not try to live for yourself? Yeah. Um, and what we've, what I've learned about the society and the world we live in, people want control of not only themselves, they want to control you. Oh yeah, we see that in the government. And time. yes, and so when people, I don't understand why people say, well, yo, that's a person, they should never transition. And I'm like, why do you want to have control over somebody that has nothing to do with you? Yeah. Like nothing to do with you. How does that even affect you? Um, I just, people should just mind their business, yeah. you know, at the end of the day. I'm like, I didn't transition a lot of these, I've heard, I've heard it all. People say, oh girl, she's transitioned. I've heard cisgender females say, girl, she's trying to transition, trying to be me. Bitch, why the fuck do I want to be you? Bitch, you don't want to be you. You trying to be me. <laughs> uh, yeah, there is like that, that. And then these guys are like, oh, they're tricking guys. Bitch, what the fuck do I got to trick guys for? I don't want you, bitch. I, I hear these bitches complaining about y'all. 
So why do I need to trick you to do anything? Whether the clothes come off, honey, the silhouette is still there. Mm -hmm. It's either you want it or you don't. And everybody, I tell people, if I'm not for you, I'm for someone else. And I'm not supposed to be for everyone. Yeah. When you're for everyone, you're too available. This knowledge right there. Okay. When you are for everyone, you made yourself too available. I'm not supposed to be for everyone. Everyone's not supposed to take me, and I'm okay with it because sometimes I can barely take myself. Mm -hmm. So I'm not supposed to be for everyone. That's overarching. Like if you're like a musician, actor, comic, comedian, you can say that you're not for everyone. Yeah. You stick to what you do. What people stick would to appreciate what you, you for. Yeah. What you're good at. Instead of trying to please everybody. Because uh, I've seen a lot of people try to, like, whether it be in music or comedy, they try to be that be-all person, and they fail terribly at it. Like, don't uh -huh. try to be for everyone. Just, you know what you can do. You know who you are. Be you. And there's always going to be an audience for that. Always an audience. You, you walk outside and there's an audience. I tell people all the time, the moment you walk outside your front door, if one person looks at you, you have an audience. Yep. So if you have an audience, why not give them something to look at? That's give true. them a show. You're like an audience. The, there's no number, huh? You're probably the most inspirational person we, we will have or have on the podcast. <laughs> Definitely the most insightful, especially yeah. in that last segment there. Oh. <laughs> we appreciate it, for sure. You warm my heart. <sighs> at the coffee shop? <laughs> yeah. We will get coffee together. Yes. Like... I'm, I was so stoked to have you on here because, like, we've I've, I've run into you multiple times, but we don't get to sit down and talk. Uh -huh. And, like, I, you're always been, like, a very fascinating person to me. So I was always, like, whatever. It's the ass. I get it. Yeah, like, <laughs> she caught me. She caught me. Fuck. I'm been exposed. No. Damn it. But, no, like, um. Cut that. Cut that. <laughs> don't cut anything. You're fine. No, um. But, like, it's just. Like, be able to do the podcast and be able to, like, like have this medium for anybody to come up here. And um, whenever we were talking about this, uh, we filmed the first couple, and then we were discussing, like, who, and you were number one on my list. I was like, I see Madam, but I don't get to talk to Madam a whole lot. And so I was super stoked to have you on here. Um, and I believe, yeah, we're in our last few minutes. Uh, so... Did you sign off real quick? Yeah? We're good. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, thank, thank you, you so, so much for having me. Of course. Thank yeah, you for honestly, out. yeah. yeah. When, when you asked me, I I really did feel honored because I was like, you know what? It, it's, it's good to have trans representation is always good to have, mm -hmm. you know, because there's some young trans person out there that possibly may be scared to do something like this because they don't think that they belong mm -hmm. in... Um, in a podcast that the world can view or the world can see, but which I mean, we're, we're living in the same world. Yeah, true. Yeah. So like, yes, and representation is everything. Of course, and like with the internet, like we're in Temple. No one, no one in New York or LA can see about Temple, but like not now, yet, not, not yet. yet, not yet, not yet. They but, are in Mexico City, Wisconsin, and Maryland. Yeah, shout out to them. Yeah, there's like uh -huh. one person in Mexico City who's listening to this right now. Hopefully, loyal. Yeah. Um, but like, um, they eat green chili a lot. I'm down with it. I'm okay. With I'm yeah. I'm cool with that. Green chili. Like, my bathroom will not be happy with me, but I'll be happy. <laughs> but no. Uh, thank you so much for being on here. Uh, we appreciate it immensely to have you on here, and um, I'm just super glad to just be able to sit down and talk with you. And, um, yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Next time I'll 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 look. A little different. So I'm having surgery in like a couple of weeks. What are you so, done? Um, I'm having my fifth nose job. Okay. Um, and I'm getting my upper lip lift again and mm -hmm. another scar removal. And then after that, in October, I'm gonna do some pulling and yeah, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to piss on these bitches and <laughs> shit on these hoes. We'll get, we'll get the I'm trying to be here. top 10 of Temple. Yes. No matter what hoe moves in, ho what hoe moves out, I want to be in the top 10. <laughs> You're always in my top 10. Um, we will have to have, we'll have to do another episode with you afterwards. Yes. And we'll be like number one, Madame Brazil. You're like me. Here we go. Yeah. You're already number one. We'll put it on the books. We'll put it on the books. But thanks guys for tuning in. This has been the Pasuda Triangle Podcast. Uh, 
Definitely rate, subscribe, all that shit we said earlier, and come out to Corky's. Yeah, come yes. see some comedy and some drag shows. Yeah. But on that note, we'll see y'all later. Stay trashy. Peace out.